Testing, testing. Microphone's working, that's a good start. Welcome back everyone. Part two of the, of the build that I'm really excited about. If you haven't watched part one, go back and watch part one. Um, the link will be, you don't, you don't fucking need a link. It's just go back and watch part one. The Gilmore Strat, here's me piece of crap template. Part one, we use this nice beach blank, but a beach, unheard of in the luthier world. We use beach anyway, because it's my guitar and tough shit. And it's all looking pucker. Everything's the right thickness. Not touching that for now. Off to the side. I was waiting for a neck blank. And the reason I was waiting is because Dave Gilmore's guitar had a pretty plain ass maple neck in it. Nothing special, nothing particular, but it's just a plain one. So I can't use any of my fancy stuff. So I ordered a neck blank and here it is. Magic of television. So first job is mark this out, get it chopped out to rough dimensions. We'll draw around it. It's, it's not rocket science. It's absolute rocket science. Let's see if we can get this neck pretty much sewn up in this episode. Bar a fret job and all the rest of it. We'll, let's get it so it looks like it's the right shape, shall we? I'll do a bit of speedy uppy with a bit of music. Ambiance. So one of the things that we have to make sure is that our neck blank is dead straight. Can't mess around with that. That's where good tools come in really handy. He says as he pulls out the cheapest, shittest caliper you've ever seen in your life. <sighs> Works nice though. So a fender neck is deceptively skinny. And we've got our nice little jig, our little template set here. And that set to the top of the fretboard it's 24.7 mil. I don't know what that is in milli inches. It's an amount of milli inches for the watchers across the pond. I haven't said hello for a while. Americans, Canadians potentially. What country are you from? Get in the comment section and show me because I'll put you on the map if I like your comment. Make it funny though. Let's not have a boring one. So we're, ideally we need to make this exactly the same. Let's just not mess around. Let's follow our templates as closely as we can. A mistake that I've made in the past, and when it comes to setting up and neck pockets and all the rest of it, you're giving yourself a bit of hassle. Make life easy for yourself. Anyone who's married understands what I'm saying. Amen. So here's our doofer, 24.6. And I've got 31. Way too big. We're gonna reduce it down. And I'm gonna do that in a certain way. I'm gonna make sure that this bastard is flat. Because when you buy timber from the suppliers, it's not gonna be perfect. David Dyke Music Supplies does supply some bloody good gear, but they're never perfect. It's wood, it can't be perfect. Duh. So over here, we have Flatus Granitus. I haven't come up with a funnier Latin name yet. And on she goes here, look. And you can see, actually, it's not bad, it's not perfect. So we're gonna do a bit of flattening. Right, she's all flattened off. Lovely, crap light over this side, must sort that out. She's all flattened off, happy with that. I'm now gonna use a sander, which I might be, oh yeah, gonna use the sander. And uh, we're gonna parallel it off, make sure and get it dead to thickness. Dead to thickness, perfect. Right, there you go, 24.65. Look at that, we're not allowed to use any of our crazy stuff. Got some amazing neck blanks. Save them for a rainy day. Right, so we've got her. She is the correct thickness, give or take 0.2 of a mil. 
let's just say that that was 0.2 of a mil out, shall we? It's all lies, just depends who you ask. That's a bunch of malarkey. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this profile correctly. That's a good idea, Paul. Why didn't I think of that? Get this neck blank routed to the correct shape. I think that's a good start. Then we'll move on to some skunk stripes. Don't get ahead of yourself. Well, I'm gonna set the router up now and uh, we'll go and make love to this and get it the right size because I left that way, way oversized. Shit me pants with the bandsaw, bit too cautious. I taste shit. Anyone who's curious, it's a Titan TR something, something in runner manner. I'm not sponsored. Just saying. Just saying, Triton. Hint, hint. This is why you need a Triton. Beautiful. Put on your eyes and ears. You were told. Okay, next phase. Next phase, get on it. Did have a bit of chatter there. It's not really gonna matter. But generally speaking, if you're using the router table or the router, a millimeter is what you want if you're profiling. Especially if you're taking it all in one hunk of a chunk like that thing does. I left a bit too much there. And a bit of chatter on the end. It's not gonna matter, that'll sand out. That's fine. We chanced it and went against the grain. Shouldn't have done that. Don't go against the grain. Next step, just a few little preliminaries. We're gonna bung on. It's lovely and easy when you're using good templates, all right? Crimson Guitars template set for a strat. It just, it just makes life easier. It takes a lot of the thinking out. And if you're like me and you struggle with the thinking, then uh, it's worth a little investment. Few things I just wanna mark out on here. There's me nut. Are you still with me? It's not hard, is it? Mark your nut out. Now I want to mark out my centre line. So you can measure things if you want. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to use the template because it's a good template and it's from a good source. I'm going to use this cheeky number. This was my dad's, bless him. One of the few tools that hangs around the workshop that belong to father. Centre line. Technical. I'm also going to use the template on the bottom, but this is just belt and braces. You see what I'm doing? Of course you can. I can barely see what I'm fucking doing. There you go. We've got lines everywhere. We know what we're doing. We've got centers. We've got nuts. This is what I would call um, a shit truss rod, but it's the only one I've got in the workshop at the minute. I've got a couple of these and I'm just going to get them out. These have got a big fat chunky bit on the end there. No need to, sorry, I don't mean to wank it off. I like the stew mat ones because it's got two brass blocks at the end that match. They are easy, simple to fit. I want my truss rod to finish where or thereabouts in line with the nut. The back edge of the nut, front edge of the truss rod. Piece of piss, all right? It can go a little bit further if you want, but we don't want it to. Here's my skunk stripe. He is gonna sit on there and we're gonna plug the hole with a bit of walnut. We should end up with a result that looks a little bit like this. After we've done that and we've scalloped the front of the headstock, we're gonna drill through and uh, find the truss rod. It's a bit of mystery for us, isn't it? Something to look forward to. One thing that I've not done before, which I'm gonna to have to this time, is they've got this nice little bit of walnut in the end here. So we're gonna to have to cut a plug and then drill a hole through that and then plug the hole there. Never done that before? That'll be interesting, won't it? Remember you're working from the back. Should we even write on there? Back, you mug. So now I've done that, I need to get my jig out. I'll set that up, I'll run you through it. Regular viewers of the channel, if you're new, welcome to the channel, go and watch part one. Been there, we've already said that. Regular viewers have seen this jig before, I'll run through it really, really quickly, right? In here, I like to take out any chance of fucking up. I think that's fairly reasonable, isn't it? 
So I built this box, the box of love, should call it that really. In here we've got some adjustable stays. That neck is not going anywhere. The important thing is that that centre line is, mark is lining up with the centre line I've got on here. I'll bring you over so you've got a proper view. Look at this, look, shit everywhere. When my router base goes in here, I've got a little cheeky stop on the end. I can't go too far that way. And there's a run through here, I can't go through that way. We've got no wibbly wobbly. You can't go wrong router in that. You haven't got to hold anything, you've got a wibbly wobbly, it's easy. I'm going to make a video on that jig because actually this is a really simple little jig that anyone can make. You don't need a table saw. I do recommend track saws. They're amazing. If you haven't got room for a table saw, get yourself a track saw. Little tip, get a single and a double. Otherwise you end up taking the bastards apart all the time. Nightmare. Now the other thing we need to consider before we get all carried away is how deep this needs to go. Now bear in mind, this is going to be the top surface of my of my fretboard i've given myself no meat to mess around with now when i'd radius this fretboard i've got to get that right to within a quarter of a mil 0.1 of a mil quite simple to do i'll show you how to do that we've got the jig we've got the jig for everything so using that bit of knowledge we can figure out how deep this has got to go and obviously this part does need to line up with our scalloped headstock so generally speaking that is going to sit underneath your fretboard. Got a squire neck here that I'll keep in for a bit of reference. And on here, to be fair, all the manufacturing, all the specs and everything, it's pretty much the bloody same. Whether it's USA Fender, Squire, whatever. These dimensions are there or thereabouts. This fretboard, with my aging eyes, accounting for a bit of curve, is about 4 mil. I'm going to go 5 mil, just to give myself a bit of love. If I give myself 5 mil, if anything goes wrong with the radius in, I've got a bit of play, a tiny bit. My net blank is 24.65. So really, my groove wants to be 20 mil deep. I'm going to take this over to the router station just to try and keep some of the mess out of the way. And then once we've done that and got that cut, find the hole, drill through, make sure everything lines up, then we'll pop it in and we'll get our skunk stripe machined and glued in. That's the plan anyway, that's the plan. It's always good to have a plan, whether it pans out, I don't know. Right, so we're, we're routed out. That was simple, wasn't it? We've got a nice massive channel there. I am gonna square that off because I haven't got the right size router bit to finish with a nice round hole. So I'm gonna have to just chisel that out up to me line. And here we go with the truss rod. We can see that that is gonna slot in there. Very snug. I went a little bit deeper than I wanted to go, but that's fine. We've got enough meat there. We have got enough meat, so I'm happy. Smallest stick I've ever seen on a man. My skunk stripe is almost the right size. We'll get this on the sander very tiny amounts at a time and get that so it's just right. Don't look too closely at the chisels there. House basher chisels at the minute. They definitely need a bit of love. Hammer! Good afternoon, Peter. Sorry if the camera shakes. There you go. Even with a blunt chisel, you can cut a square hole. The irony is this thing's being relic. But you still have to build a perfect guitar to start with. Otherwise, you're, you're in the wrong mindset, and we don't want to be doing that, do we? So our truss rod is going to go in there. That fits rather pleasantly now. Now I'm going to get this skunk stripe to fit snugly. Over to the sander again. Tight, tight as a vicar's daughter. Very happy with that, that's better than my last one. That is gonna be perfection. So now we have the arduous task of scalloping our headstock. This is something that I've got wrong a few times in the past. Basically we're creating this shape now, top of our headstock.
Okay, so many moons ago, I had a teeny tiny workshop, and in that teeny tiny workshop, I bought plans to make myself um, a thicknesser. Just for like little baby jobs. Obviously, I've got the big jet now. She's my baby. But this is what's left over from the thicknesser. And I have adjusted it and made use of it because it is amazing for sanding my headstocks to thickness. That is set at exactly the right size. I've just got to pop that one through there and we've got to sand it back until we're about five mil from the nut line. What simpler? It's a great bit of kit. It's fucking terrifying. And my coupling on the end here has broken this bit. So we've got a dodgy screw in. People could die. I'm going to use it this one last time. If something does happen, we'll get it on camera because that'd be funny. Eyes and ears for this bastard. That might seem a bit terrifying, but look, it gives us a perfectly scalloped headstock. No messing, lovely jubbly. Super happy with that. Now we can crack on. Our overall thickness due to my wonderful machine is 15.26. And this one is 14.7. Apparently thick ones are better. Yep. Just what I've heard. Came as sad news to me as I'm sure it did to you. Right, so now we've done that, we have to, I have to figure out how I'm gonna cut through to see our truss rod. Because that's one bit I've never done. I know, what do you know? Not, fuck, not a lot. How do you make this entertaining for a video? Comment down below, guys, how can I make this more entertaining? It's me figuring out how to measure a bit of metal with a ruler. If your missus walks in now, she's gonna think you're a right boring twat. She already thinks it, actually. That's fine. I'll leave that in the video because that's a rude awakening for everyone. So nine mil from the top is the centre of my hole. Oh, I don't know how you do it. It's, this one is pretty shit. It's in on an angle. Drill it in. And in fact, we can see it's flush. Drill it in and pull your drill down and try not to fuck everything up. We've got about two hours work into this net, two and a half hours. So if it dies now, we've lost 25 pound net blank and a bit of dignity. So I'm going to order these off Mr. Bezos. Hopefully they're going to come tomorrow. But what I do know is that one of those cuts me a 10 mil plug. So I'm going to drill a 10 mil hole. People at home screaming, clamp it down. All right, steady the ship. Let's get a good camera angle so you can see if it all goes wrong. Well, stone me crows, it worked. Let me know what you think about the warts and all filming, seeing the tripod, moving it around. Just kind of get you involved, isn't it? I'm down here on my own, talking to myself in the fucking workshop. People think I'm mental. Have you ever seen a psychiatrist? Let's be fair, I am, really. We are in the O. I don't know if you can see that. We're in the O. That's a result. That's a result. I'm taking that result. Run away quickly. I think that'll do, don't you? I think that's enough. I'm drawing the line under this video. I've done a little bit more work, but I'm not putting it in. Come back next week, bollocks. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you leave a comment. I love the comments. Everyone loves the comments. Answer each other's comments. Talk to each other in the comment section, but be friendly. No one likes a... <laughs>